Welcome back to the Swamp 24-7 Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas Goldcamp, here with my co-host, Jacob Rudner. We'll have Blake Alderman on in a little bit to discuss more Florida football. But Jacob, we have some big news from uh, a program that you are plenty familiar with. Florida has landed a transfer from Arizona State receiver Ricky Pearsall. I guess very broadly, can you tell us what Florida's getting in Pearsall? Yeah, it sounds like, based on my understanding, that Ricky has an opportunity to immediately join Florida's roster as a as a candidate to start in the slot. Uh, and if that's the case, I would say that he's an above-average-sized slot receiver. Uh, tough guy, uh, smart, and a good route runner. Really understands how to leverage his size well by dropping his hips. Uh, he has average overall hands. I would say that he doesn't exactly stand out with, a, with an incredible uh, ability to make, you know, extraordinary catches and his catch radius is nothing phenomenal either it's good uh, but I would say that the real grab here for Florida is the fact that he is a quick uh, sharp route runner he is somebody who knows how to leverage interior routes particularly well and did a great job of that for Arizona State last year and it's just kind of one of those guys that I think you're going to be able to get a consistent sort of product out of him uh, according to his father who I've been talking to with throughout his recruitment uh, he was recently tracked on Arizona State's in practice tracking system. It basically has players wearing these small vests under their pads that tracks things like mile per hour, uh, heart rate and stuff like that. He was tracked as fast as 23 miles per hour in a practice. Wow. Uh, yeah. Which is quite quick. Uh, and so I obviously don't, you know, that's, you take that for what it's worth, but I, I can say that he does, he does possess pretty solid quickness overall. And so I would say that this is a really good pickup. And then relative to Florida's wide receiver situation, I would say that it was a great pickup just considering what they needed. Yeah, I mean, you were out there all spring. We, you know, we talked about it even going into sort of this spring transfer portal window. That was a spot there where we thought Florida needed an infusion of some talent. And obviously, the Gators have a couple veterans. You look at what Justin Shorter did last year. I think a lot of people are sort of hoping that he can take the next step and sort of really emerge as sort of a go-to type receiver. He certainly got the size, has the speed, but you know, there's been question marks about his hands here and there. Beyond that, I mean, Trent Whittemore is, is we think, a guy that can be pretty productive, uh, maybe even somewhat similar in some ways to Pearsall, maybe not quite as quick. Um, but him, Xavier Henderson, I mean, neither of those guys have really quite stepped up to where you'd feel super comfortable with them being your number one or your number two. Um, Jacob, how, how, how far up the pecking order do you think that Pearsall slides, given what you've seen of him and Florida's receiving core? Yeah, I would think that there's, a, I mean, just to start, I would say that he immediately jumps in as a top four receiver on this team. And there's really no question in my mind about that. He joins that group of Henderson and Justin Shorter and Trent Whittemore uh, right away. I would say that there is probably a really good chance that he cracks the top three and becomes Florida's starting slot receiver. Again, I just think with the skill set, and you even mentioned it yourself, that there are a lot of things that Trent Whittemore does well but perhaps not best suited for a slot receiver type role. And I think that that's going to open the door pretty quickly for Pearsall to kind of prove that that is my role. That is the kind of category of receiver that I fit into perhaps more uh, seamlessly than Trent Whittemore does. And so I would say that there's a, there's a good chance that on day one, we could probably see Ricky Pearsall start. And I should add that he's familiar with Florida's day one opponent. He has played Utah every single year of his career. And uh, that is where Florida kicks things off. Yeah, that's, that's definitely an interesting benefit I hadn't really thought of to this point. Um, you know, I had fans ask me on the Swamp 24-7 message board kind of what happens, you know, if, if Pearsall goes into the slot, because I do think a lot of Florida fans are pretty high on Trent Whittemore. Now, obviously, he's had some injury history. He's had a, a punctured lung, and then I forget, um, I don't remember if that was last year or the year before, but he had another injury that slowed him at one point last year. Uh, my thinking is very much that Whittemore is the type that can play outside, and I believe as a freshman when he came in, he played one of those outside spots along with Van Jefferson. So he kind of has already done that. And I think, you know, from a football IQ standpoint, he's very sharp, can pick things up quickly. But I think to to the other point, you know, Trent Whittemore isn't a guy that's necessarily as quick in a phone booth, so to speak. And that doesn't mean he's not a good route runner. I do think he's a good route runner, but he's not necessarily that fast, explosive, shifty type in the slot. Trent Whittemore is a great athlete in terms of going up and getting the football. And we've seen that a lot. And I think that's typically a skill set that you like your outside guys to have. And so when you're talking about Florida looking sort of for those go-to playmakers, I actually think this could be a very much win-win scenario for Florida where you get Pearsall in the slot, you know, and are able to ramp him up fairly quickly uh, with a system that he should be, you know, pretty able to handle, I think, early on. 
And then, you know, you've got a guy like Whittemore all of a sudden competing potentially with Xavier Henderson outside, get a little bit more competition for that spot. And again, I think Whittemore's skill set, you know, he's the guy that can jump out of the gym as a fantastic basketball player. So he can go up and make some of those contested catches. And we've seen that. So Jacob, I think for, for a Florida program that was looking for some talent from the portal, this is good news because, you know, there's, there hasn't been that many targets for Florida in the portal. And this is one that Florida had their eye on from the very start. As soon as Pearsall entered the portal, um, wasn't an easy battle. You know, I, I think you've, you've, you know, can maybe speak to this a little bit more, but yeah. this was a, a decision that really did kind of sort of come down to the wire in a lot of ways. And Oregon, I think, gave Florida a, and really gave Pearsall a lot to think about. No, there's no doubt about that. I mean, as late as uh, it really did come down to the last second and, and Ricky Pearsall's father had told me that there was even talk amongst them that this would be a last minute decision and just kind of one of those things where when it came down time to announce something, whichever one felt right was going to be what they were going to go with because they really did feel strongly about both programs. They liked what Billy Napier was putting out there. They thought the opportunity to play with Anthony Richardson was a huge selling point, but they also saw a lot of qualities that they liked at Oregon. I think that they liked the new coaching staff over there. Uh, Bo Nix at quarterback. I also think they looked at somewhat favorably and you have to keep in mind that Pearsall is familiar with the PAC 12. So that would have been a move where he stays somewhat closer to home He's playing against teams that he knows that he can play well against and has an opportunity potentially to do kind of a similar rise very quickly up the depth chart type situation. And you go and you dominate that competition. And that was the selling tactic that that Oregon chose to use. Uh, And I can, I can tell you that one of the things that Florida was really trying to sell to him and clearly it worked was, you know, you can play in the PAC 12. You were Arizona state's leading receiver last year. So why not come show that you can be the same guy against better competition? Come play in the SEC where it doesn't get tougher and show people that you can be a good receiver. And I know that there was a presentation that Florida gave. Uh, Billy Napier was a part of that. I know that uh, there were several other coaches and members of the Gator Made program who were also on this uh, Zoom call with Pearsall and his family uh, on Thursday where they basically laid this all out. And they said, look, you know, these are kind of the benefits that you could get personally from coming to Florida. We also think we're, we're pretty confident with what we have going from a team perspective, and we think that you need to be a part of it. And uh, obviously, that, that is what we uh, won out. So, uh, yeah, it was a good job by Florida to, to hang with it. It did get close. Uh, there was time, I would say, where it was a genuine toss-up. I was posting about it on the Swamp 24-7 message board where it was, it was not only down to the wire, but there were even times potentially where I felt as though, just based off my conversations with Pearsall and his family that things might have even been slightly trending towards Oregon. I know that there are also members of Florida's coaching staff that maybe didn't feel similarly fully, but also were definitely on the fence of where it was going and they couldn't really tell either as late as Friday. Yeah. So Florida Florida definitely did a good job and this is a big win for Billy Napier. There's there's no doubt about it.